As an amigurumi maker, have you ever found yourself in one of these situations before? Your best friend is throwing the most fabulous baby shower and you promise to crochet the cutest little mermaid toy and you have two days left to finish it and now you're panicking. Or maybe you're restocking your Etsy shop and you promised all your customers that your virtual doors would be open by 8 a.m. Saturday morning and you still have three toys that you haven't finished yet. Or maybe you are just tired of wasting time and you know that you could be crocheting toys at a quicker pace and you just need a few tips and tricks along the way? Well today I am sharing 14 of the best time saving hacks for amigurumi makers. So let's go ahead and get started and quit wasting time. Hi, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and time-saving tips for amigurumi makers has been really fresh on my mind because I have been working on the Three Little Pigs pattern and the Not So Big Bad Wolf and I started to pay attention to the things that I was doing that were time wasters, number one, but what were the things that I was doing that were helping my progress to go along more quickly? So I'm sharing all 14 of these tips with you and I think some of them are really good if I do say so myself. But I wanted to let you know that the Three Little Pigs pattern is out and the Not So Big Bad Wolf will be out very, very soon. As always, you're going to find links for everything in the description box below, but let's go ahead and jump right in with my number one tip, and that is to choose projects that you're actually excited about. When you start to crochet or knit an amigurumi project and you're not excited about it, you are less likely to pick it up and the time seems to drag on and you might procrastinate and you might make excuses excuses for why you can't work on it. I know that I've done that in the past and now I am extremely choosy about the type of projects that I want to work on because I know that if I choose one that I don't really like, I'm not going to work on it and it's going to drag on and on and on and on. So choose projects that you're actually excited about because you're going to want to pick them up and work on them any chance you get. My second tip is to organize your amigurumi patterns for easier access. Number one, some of us have a lot of printed patterns and some of us have a lot of digital patterns. And what I highly recommend is get your patterns organized in a way that makes sense to you. So for me, I have binders of crocheted toys and I have binders of knitted toys. Most of my patterns are printed, not digital, but I like to keep them separated by crocheting and by knitting. The next thing I like to do is to keep my patterns separated by dolls and animals. And then I further separate them into the patterns that I like the most are in the front and the patterns that maybe I'm not so excited about are towards the back. That way, anytime that I need to find one of these patterns, I can get to it lickety split. So if you have digital or printed patterns, try to keep them in an organized way that makes sense for you. My third tip is to keep a small inventory of yarn in the brands and colors that you regularly use for your amigurumi projects because one of the biggest time wasters is having to go to the store to get the yarn or to order it online. So if you have a small inventory of those brands in the colors that you actually use, you will be saving yourself some time. I find that it's okay to experiment from time to time, but by keeping those staples on hand at all times helps to speed up the process because then I don't have to wait to either go shopping or to get my mail in the yarn. No, <laughs> get my yarn in the mail. I'm a huge advocate for this fourth tip and that is to work on one project at a time. I know it's tempting to have lots of different projects going on all at the same time and sometimes you feel like it keeps you from getting bored with one project but what I will really recommend is that when you focus on one thing and you put all of your energy into that one thing, you can make an amazing amount of progress in a much shorter period of time. Because when you're jumping from project to project, you have to reorient yourself to what you're doing. You have to reacquaint yourself with the pattern. You might have to look for supplies, but if you are only working on one project at a time, you can focus all of that energy on that one toy and you can get it done much, much quicker. My fifth tip is to read over the pattern first. Don't just skim over the pattern. Actually really read it and looking for those details so that number one, you will become very familiar with the construction of the toy before you actually start. And number two, 
two, you will know if there are any materials that you don't have on hand and you don't get halfway through the project and realize, oh my goodness, I need this different color yarn and I didn't even know it. And now my project has to be stalled because I have to go order this yarn. Read over that pattern with a fine tooth comb and highlight any special stitches that you need to learn, any special things that you need to order and get that done first. Learn those stitches, get familiar with the construction of the pattern. That way, when you actually start, you can go. You don't need to take that time and stop and learn that new technique. You've already got it done. The sixth tip is probably one that you're already doing, and that is to gather all of your supplies and keep them in one project bag. And it's always fun to have a cute little project bag, and I have several from my friend Pia from Mrs. Ginger Handmade, and I also have one from Julie from the Button Jar Studio, and they are my favorite to keep my projects in. But sometimes we just have to use what we have around the house, and I have been known to use reusable grocery bags or even plastic grocery bags just to be able to keep all of my supplies in one spot because having to go to different places to grab the crochet hook or the yarn or your knitting needles can be a big time waster. One of the things that I've been doing lately is going to my local thrift shops, especially Salvation Army, and getting baskets. There are so many gorgeous, wonderful baskets at your local thrift shop and they're usually really, really, really cheap because if I were to buy these baskets at Target. Target would probably charge at least $20, $30, $40 for a basket that I can get for two or three dollars at Salvation Army and they are perfect and it's so nice to have a basket full of all of your beautiful yarn and your project. The only downside to having a basket is typically they are open and for someone like me my kitty cats are going to get into it for sure. So if you have some curious kitty cats around your house maybe a basket isn't the best idea but it still is a beautiful and an inexpensive way to be able to keep all of your supplies for your project in one place. The seventh tip really goes along with tip number six, and that is to keep your projects easily accessible and portable. So you've got it in your bag or a basket and keeping it in the place that you typically crochet or knit is the best way to not waste time. I have a cabinet in my living room that I like to keep my project that I'm working on so that I can just open it and grab it and sit down in my favorite chair and work on it in the evenings while we watch TV as a family. But I also like to have it in a portable bag that I can just take it anytime I am ready to go somewhere. And having all of the materials together makes it super, super simple. I was at an appointment with my son just yesterday. I was trying to work on my wolf project and guess what? I left my pattern at home. So this is an additional tip that my friend Marge said to me and I posted this on my Instagram stories. And she said to always take take a picture of your pattern. That way you have it on your phone because you're likely not going to leave your house without your phone. And I thought that was such a great tip. So thank you, Marge. So from now on, I will always gather all of my materials together. But if I forget that pattern, at least I'll have it on my phone. So I don't have to waste that time sitting in a doctor's waiting room and not being able to work on my project. The eighth tip is to track your progress. One of the biggest time wasters is not knowing where you are in a pattern. Now I I love to write all over my patterns, whether they are in book form or whether they are a printed pattern, but some of you like to have those digital files. I've created a very simple printable tracker. One of the great things is you can look at how many rounds are in the pattern. Say there are 119 and you can actually mark off all of the other rounds that are on your tracker from rounds 120 all the way to 200. Mark them out. That way you know that you don't have to do those. And as you complete each one of your rounds, just check it off and that way you know exactly where you are in the pattern because that is a huge time waster is having to figure out where you are in your pattern. And sometimes if you're really unlucky, you have to frog your work to get back to a place that you actually know where you are. Trust me, I've done that before many times and it's not fun. My next tip is to use a yarn bowl or a homemade yarn bag. Now I actually don't own any yarn bowls, but I have made this simple yarn bag because it it keeps the yarn from going all over the place. And for me, that's actually been a big time waster because my yarn either is going all different directions or sometimes if I'm using multiple colors, they can get mixed up together. And by having these in the bag coming through the holes, it is so simple. It's so easy to do and you can keep everything super organized. They're not rolling all around and they're not getting crossed and mixed up and all of those things by keeping them in a bag. And it's super easy to do. One tip that has 
saved me the most amount of time is to crochet or knit all of the pieces at once and wait to assemble it later. There's a concept in positive psychology called flow and you may have heard of it before and it's basically that state of mind when you are working on something and time seems to fly by and you are oblivious to everything around you and if you're a crocheter and a knitter you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're in that state of flow and you're just cruising along instead of crocheting the head, stopping, embroidering, seaming, doing all of those things, you could go ahead and crochet or knit all of the pieces and then you could assemble it later. The next tip is to seam all of your toys later, which really goes along with the last tip. Because what's really interesting about that state of flow is that not only is it super enjoyable to be in that very creative state, but it also has proven to be extremely productive. You can get so much done when you are just working, 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 and you are enjoying what you're doing. And by doing it all at one time, you can make a lot of progress a lot quicker. Now, obviously, not every crochet or knitting amigurumi pattern will allow you to do that because sometimes you have to seam something before you can crochet or knit another piece. But if you can, try to crochet or knit all of the pieces at once and then seam them all at once. The 12th tip is something that I've had to learn the hard way, and that is to use stitch markers that lock in place. I have <laughs> wasted so much time when a stitch marker has fallen out and I have had to go back and figure out where the beginning of my round is. And I get really frustrated when that happens. So I've just started using very inexpensive plastic lockable stitch markers and I have found that they work really great. They're not the prettiest thing in the whole world, but when it comes to saving time, that's what I need to do. So although it actually seems counterintuitive a little bit to have a stitch marker that you have to take the time to lock it, it actually saves me time so that I'm not having to go back when that stitch marker falls out because it inevitably always does during one of my projects. So now I love to use those lockable ones and they save me time. My next to last tip has been a total time saver for me and that is using a fob on the end of my scissors. I have wasted so much time looking for my little pair of scissors when I am working on an amigurumi project because inevitably my scissors would find their way to the very most bottom corner of my project bag and I could never ever find them. So now I have this cute little fob that I got from the button jar studio and it just makes it so simple to be able to find my scissors lickety split. They are no longer camouflaged at the bottom of my bag and I can grab them and I'm wasting less time looking for them. My final tip is to go ahead and weave in those ends right away. Now, I know you may not like me anymore after you hear that tip, but it really does make a lot of sense to just go ahead and weave the ends in right away. Number one, the great thing is with us amigurumi makers, we typically don't have a lot of ends to have to weave in. So get it done right away because once you get that done, you can move on to the next step and you're not going to have to go back and think about all those ends that you have to weave in because that can stall your momentum when you have to go back and weave in lots and lots of ends. So don't do it. Just go ahead, weave in that end as soon as it needs to be done, and you will be thanking yourself when you finish that amigurumi toy in record time. I hope these 14 tips were helpful, but I want to hear from you. Do you have any great time-saving tips for amigurumi? Because I want to know about them, and I know others would love to read them in the comments as well. But if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up up, subscribe to the channel, and always share this video with someone that you think might benefit from it. But as always, stay safe out there and happy stitching.